Hi everyone, this game is um, a Latvian counter gambit game and it's between the young Bobby Fischer who is 12 years old, e either 11 or 12, I'm not sure, it depends on uh, what month of the year it was. And this is from the US uh, a Championship in 1955 and he's playing with the white pieces against a player named Victor's Pupols. Game started out again, E4, E5 and Fischer had the white pieces. And remember, he's only 11 or 12 years old at this point. So knight f3, f5. How would Fischer, even at this age, handle the Latvian counter gambit? Knight takes e5, the most principal continuation. Queen f6. Okay, attacking the knight. d4, d6, attacking the knight. Driving the knight away. f takes e4. Knight c3, okay, all uh, common, threatening to take on e4 and attack the queen. The queen goes to g6, and knight e3, and there's different moves that's played here. This is a move recommended by uh, Nimzovic, but there's also f3, and there's uh, different ways to skin this cat. Fischer opts for the positional choice here and plays knight e3. Knight f6, and he plays bishop c4, which, um, it's okay. It has the idea of playing d5. Again, if you looked at my other video on the, uh, that I just uploaded on about the Latvian counter gambit, Grandmasters versus the Latvian counter gambit, um, in the, uh, chess analysis playlist, you can see that this move d5 has a cramping effect on black's queen side. It keeps the knight on b8 from going to his natural square, which is c6. But it also keeps black from um, fortifying a center with d5. <clears throat> and for all intents and purposes, isolates the pawn on e4 so that white can uh, attack, attack it more effectively. Okay. So after bishop c4, anticipating d5, c6. Because black wants to play d5 and have a nice center so for example after a move a castle and just d5 and black is okay and can look to start to take the initiative this is what uh black would love this okay ideal position for black so after c6 fisher plays d5 according to plan bishop e7 from poopoles a4 Again, Fitch is playing real positional, positional in nature here. Just kind of um, hindering white's, uh, black's pawns on the queen side and trying to provoke some uh, weakness. Knight bd7. A5. And now, we we'll see knight e5. Okay, so a lot of pawn moves by white here, by Fisher. And this allows black to uh, actually take a lead in development. All right. And we see that, uh, you know, black has become very active here. And this is something that uh, white has to be careful of in this opening. So black, excuse me, white has been establishing his positional dominance on the queen side, but he's allowed black to become active on the king side. And those are going to be your two basic um, basic uh, you know contrasting ideas in the position with this advanced e pawn this is signifying whites excuse me blacks intent to utilize the space advantage on the king side to attack on the king side and white has a space advantage on the queen side and he's um, going to try to attack over there this should be two Castle, castles, bishop d7, king h1, we see some prophylaxis, anticipating um, the coming onslaught on the king side, so Fisher moves to king h1, king h8, getting off the diagonal, knight c4, so we see some um, movement on the queen side by black, 
excuse me, by white. An x-ray against this pawn right here. For instance, this pawn could be taken. Then you can capture this pawn. Knight fg4. Okay. Let's go with the with the attack. You know, we're already threatening. Knight takes f2. Check. Fisher plays queen e1. To the bad sign, the defensive move that you don't want to have to make is white in the opening. You don't want you want to continue your plans. And can you believe after move 16, right after queen e1, that Bobby Fisher, although he's just a little kid here, he's already lost in this position. And if you want, you could pause this video and find uh, Black's uh, correct sequence. To basically, put White out of his misery. Okay. In the game, Pupos played Rook to F7, which is a natural looking move. The idea, of course, is to utilize the only open file and uh, attack down this F file. Okay, but that's not the move that wins the game. The winning move is simply knight f3, which is just devastating. Okay, knight attacks the queen, threatens to win this pawn at the same time. Okay, let's get this variation out the way. If g takes f3, e takes f3, hitting the bishop, and let's say the bishop tries to, you know, play uh attack the queen queen h5 winning there's no stopping the mate okay if bishop takes just e takes and uh it's hard just it's hard to really come up with any kind of meaningful uh moves here so for instance queen f queen e4 just bring the rook there. And I'll uh, just make a random move. Bishop f4, and then you just take. Okay, if you take like that, your bishop is hanging on f4. So, if you go like that, and the queen drops. So, there's no answer to f3. So, after queen e1, double question mark. Right, Fisher would be lost if Pupos played knight f3. But he didn't. He missed it. Played, instead, he played rook f7. So Fisher has another chance. Fisher played h3. He wants to get the knight out of there. And Pupos played knight f6. Fisher. Gets the idea and says, hey, I got to get rid of that dangerous piece. And he trades off. And now he plays bishop c4. So now we see Fisher developed a little initiative here. Right? Due to Black's error. And now he's just simply, simply threatening to play c takes. Excuse me, d takes c6. With the discovered attack on the rook from the bishop on c4. And simultaneously attacking this guy. <clears throat> so... The rook moves back. Again, that's some time in Fisher's pocket. Free time, right? Tempo, tempo is important in chess. There's time, because when you get time, that means you can do. It's like a free move. So rook f f8. That's black admitting, hey, there's something wrong with the, you know, the move I made. You know, so he's trying to fix it. This extra time gives you the time to do whatever you want to do. So make it a good move. Bishop e3. And that wasn't a good move. <laughs> okay. Gotta make a humble move like queen e2 here. The problem is, is after, after this move, bishop e3, which looks normal. Then c takes d5. And if knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Then you have this mate threat here. So let's say 
capture. Yeah, book F3. And black is winning. So notice how powerful it is to have that advanced e pawn. And how everything falls in line with black's plan of um, attacking on the king side. Right? The variations are different, but the plan is still the same. Now, if he plays queen e2, and black tries to go through with this plan, now it doesn't have the same, uh, the same effect. So, for instance, bishop takes. Say rook a f eight, just continuing, continuing to pile on the pressure. And this is forced. But now, white has the two rooks. Now bishop e three. Now right, white has two rooks. Versus the queen. So. Mm, it's a difficult position still. Because e4 is coming. And then this bishop here. And this will take further analysis. But I'm wondering. Because you got to guard this square from that. So then say. Uh, I don't know. Queen f6. Queen f5 maybe. And the position is, is, is to me, it's unclear. He has two rooks versus the queen, you know, the bishop. And I'm not sure if white can, and, uh, if white can, I think white can survive. I think white, I think it's a, like an equal position, but it's just that white has to be very careful here. Back to the game. So, Fisher, the young Fisher, played bishop e3. And like I said, after c takes, Knight takes, knight takes. I mean, he's pretty much busted again. Because he, do, he doesn't have this queen here on e2. There's all the difference in that variation. But. Pupols plays knight h5. So he misses another opportunity to, um, you know, to uh, beat Bobby Fischer. So that's two. Two chances. Fisher plays king h2. Bishop d6. Is that opposition I'm always talking about? Bishop b3. Knight f4. And here, um, you can see the build up against these squares. This is rough. There's mate threat right here. And best move is probably rook g1. Because it deals with the threat. And keeps the position closed. In a position like this, you want to try to keep the pieces out. You want to keep lines closed. Okay, if you're white, you want to keep the lines closed. I mean, black is still better. Because you can still, the thing is, you can still keep building up on the position. That's what makes that's what makes this a rough position. See, this square right here, I mean, he's threatening to sack a bishop or something and then play here. And again, you remember what I said? You want to keep the position closed. So what do you play here? How do you deal with this threat? They move like queen f1. I'm not saying it's the best move, but that's in the spirit of the position. Because I know I know my overall plan is, hey, I want to keep the position closed. So now I'm defending against this threat. It looks crazy. You know, it looks a little awkward. You know, I'm not saying that white is fine here, but it keeps the position closed. And you go on to fight another day. That's That's how you play these type of positions. You got to have that general concept in your mind first and have that be correct knowing that hey he's real active I need to keep these bishops you know tamed to keep it closed as possible now check out what happened in the game though Fisher played bishop takes f4 and now with 
you know, based on what I just told you about you wanting to, you know, have the general idea of keeping the position closed, you see that this is an error now. So it gives up the bishop, and now you got those pawns mobilized. Remember, I always talk about the pawns in the center being valuable, you know, their value increasing with their mobility. If they're mobile, they're very valuable and dangerous. If they're immobile, they become targets and liabilities. So look what happens. So Fisher exchanges. He takes f4 happens, right? And of course, he, he's not, it's hard to blame him because he's looking at, okay, I can tear the center down, you know, play queen takes e4. But again, I always say this too, as Capablanca, you know, said, first material, I'm sorry, first position, then material. So he gained, so Fisher here is going to gain material, but then his king comes under attack because... Look at the dark square bishop here and this bishop. Now after bishop takes f4, queen takes f3. Now look at this bishop. So it gives up material, but now, you know, now he's threatening mate here. All right, discover check, mate. The only thing he can do now is play a move like g3. So after g3, can you find Black's move to win the game? There's another. This is a third. I think. The, yeah, third chance now that Pupols has to defeat the young Bobby Fischer, right? It's three times, right? Once, twice, three times a lady. All right. So, three times. If you want, you could pause the video. Pupols played Bishop f5. Attacking the queen. Okay. That's not it. That ain't it. This is the move. Queen h5. Notice this pawn cannot be pushed to g4 because of the pin. Bishop d6 on the pawn of g3. The king is right here. That's the value of that opposition coming in handy. So how do you defend this guy? There's no way to defend it. You have to play a move like h4. However... After h4, right? Because the only thing defended is the queen. Now this is when you throw that interference in there. Bang! Rook f4, now what? If you take there, then it's going to just be mate in short order. Okay? Stop playing. See? Okay, rook f4. And then... That's the only other move, and then you just take the queen. So, he missed that. Instead, he played bishop f5. This gave Fisher the defensive resource to play queen h4. See, now the queen takes this square away from black. Game continued. Rook a8. Rook a e1. Bishop e5. And... I got to say, it's 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 amazing because Fisher's young, you know, 11, 12 years old, and he, he's fighting here. I mean, he's under intense pressure here, and he's just, you know, he's fighting. He made some big mistakes. He's fighting here. He plays queen b4 here, which I don't like because the, all the action from black is over on the king side. So white has to, white has to defend the king side first before he tries anything else. He cannot afford to take any pieces away from the king side at this point. So the queen is in an excellent spot. And I already told you how important this move was for black. Okay. If he wants to play on the queen side, maybe do a move like that. Because at least he can undermine this C pawn right here. So for instance, something like that, then he can, you know, play that. You know, undermine the pawn. And these pawns are of little value at right now. So Fisher played queen b4, and once again, black has an opportunity to win the game immediately. And if you want, you could pause the game. <laughs> All right, so here, Poopos finally hit the right move. He played queen h6 against Fisher, right? Threatening, threatening uh, mate, and two. Okay. This is not possible. Well, it is possible, but it's it won't work. You 
because just simply queen takes and uh, g takes is not possible. Okay, Fisher played h4. Okay, he made a big error here. And now you might be saying, well, what about queen taking h4 now? No, because the queen is still defending on b4. So if queen takes, that would be a major error because then just queen takes and white would be winning. Again, I think this is number five now. Fifth opportunity for for Pupos to put Fisher away here. Okay, what would you play here? Pupos play G5. Right, natural looking move. Open up the position. But, it is a winning move. Bishop takes G3. Right, just opening up everything. Black is black. Look at black's pieces. Black is fully developed, so it's time to to finish to finish the job. He played g5, but bishop takes g3 wins. If f takes g3, then it's mate. Right at the queen d2 check. You see that? There's no no defense. Real simple. So after bishop takes g3, this king takes, again, mate, because black, uh, I'm sorry, white can, cannot afford to have any lines be open around the king at this point. The bishops and the rooks and queens hovering around like that, any open lines are fatal. So that's why you want to open the lines. And that's how you, that's one of the, um, you know, just to segue real quick, that's one of the things in chess, um, that will help you find moves is try to fi find like the general like a general theme and then work off of that you know it's kind of like you're starting from like a macro you know macro situation and then breaking it down so like when I look at this position I look at the white pieces and I say I look at the white king and I say man if any of those files are open I probably, probably, you know, this is without any analysis or calculation. I say without, excuse me, without any deep calculation, I just look at it in general and say, man, if I had any open files, like, for instance, if the H pawn was gone or the G pawn was gone, I probably could mate, mate this guy. And then I just start working it out, start thinking about different things I can do to get the lines open toward the king. I know he needs to clo keep lines closed, and I think, how can I open them? Now, he had the right idea to open lines because he played G5, so obviously he was thinking about that. But he missed the idea of the of the piece sack. Okay, so now, of course, if he just tried to avoid, you know, capturing all together, then you just play that. Okay, so the guy missed his chance. He played G5. And Fisher played rook he1. Of course, the idea being to skate off with the uh, king to g1. Now, Fisher made another mistake. And this is, again, there's another chance for Pupos to put put him away. He opens up the position. So, it's, it's the correct move. G takes h4. And Fisher skates off king g1. Right? What could be wrong with that? He'll simply just play... You know, rook takes h5 and hit the queen. So that's his idea. Now, Pupos, for some reason, after playing, you know, in the correct manner, at least, he might not have found all the accurate moves, but his his um, moves were logical in that he sought to first congregate his pieces on the king side, right, following the fact that the pawn on e4 was there. And he had more space on the king side, right? He followed that plan logically by congregating his pieces over, and we can see how beautifully, beautifully they're lined up. Then he followed the next step by opening the position, right? understanding that development in itself is not the be-all, end-all, but you have to have open lines in order for those pieces to shine to their fullest potential. He opened the position. Again, he didn't find all the exact moves, but generally speaking, he followed the plan. Right, so now, for some odd reason, again, 
He has a, another move. I think this is the seventh move where he could have knocked out Fisher. He plays H3, keeping the position closed. Okay. Now, again, is White winning all of a sudden? No. But it does not make it, it, it defies the it defies the logic of the position. Why would you play a move like that? Close the position. What are you gonna play? H two? You know, you know what I mean? H two check or something like that? It doesn't it, it just um defies logic. So that move is like a that move gets a question mark from me. You wanna keep the tension there, keep the position closed. I understand he was his idea is he doesn't want to deal with the move like that. This is why he did that. But you have to understand that in such position, any counterattack by White has to be looked at, you know, skeptically. Because his position is that bad that any kind of counter blow probably wouldn't be sound. So the move here is just Queen G7. Okay. Again, maintaining the tension here. Let's look at it. All right, Rook takes h4. Again. The idea is take and mate. Mate is coming up. There's no, no getting around that. Let's look at it. Let's look at it, look at it this way. Take with the queen. Guess what? Same thing. Notice the rook here is unprotected. Okay. See, it's too much. Too much. It's too much firepower. And then again, that's all. She again, it's all about open lines. You don't have to calculate everything exactly. All you need to know is if the lines are open, you're gonna win the game. And that's how you find those type of moves. You say, okay, I need to open a line, open the lines up. But he believed his opponent and went with H3. And again, he's still winning because, again, this rook is severely misplaced in the corner. But Queen G7 was much stronger. Fisher played D takes here. Popols played B takes. Again, open the lines. This wins. No, there's no stopping it. Of course, rook takes e1 would would happen right there. And if he try rook takes, check. So the thing the thing is it's funny because this guy Pupols is within like one move of just probably causing Fisher to resign. But it's like right when he gets to the precipice, it's like he makes. You know, like a, a a weak move, which is kind of frustrating. Queen c5 from Fisher again. I'm not gonna show you anymore. He has the same tactic with his bishop takes g3. Queen g7. King h2. And queen f6 is played. And uh, just simple move like bishop d4. Is good. Queen takes a7 from Fisher. So Fisher decides, hey, I can grab some pawns here. <laughs> um, but notice, though, the game is e gets easier for Fisher because look at the closed nature of the king side now. You see, black has set itself difficulties. And now, finally, after all of these moves, we see Fisher finally attacking on the queen side. This is all Black's fault. He had a winning attack, and now he allowed uh, White to develop a little artificial castle here. Let's see, so now Bishop D4 is played. Fisher finds Queen C7. Bishop takes F2. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook F1. Bishop D4. And now the game is pretty much up for grabs at this point. I believe that it was a clear whitewash from Black, but now Fisher has came back. I mean, he has nine lives. I mean, there had to be at least nine chances that um, Pupos could have put him away. 
Okay. Now here at the bishop d4, Fisher decided to play rook takes f3, which is fatal. There's another chance. The game is over right here. And again, it's just due to the open lines around the king. Okay. Fisher had to play queen f4. Okay, keep the king protected and um keep the lines closed. That's the that's the theme for black. For white here, keep the lines closed. This king is too. Um, there's too many pieces on the board. The two, the bishops, queens, rooks. So that ca the king has to be protected. Instead, he decides it's a safe time to take. So he he plays that, and Pupos decides to play. Bishop takes c3, which again trading off. And again, I can see the reason. It's real clear. He wants to play this move, bishop e4. So he wants to get rid of the knight from protecting on e4, which is understandable. And also, he wants to be able to bring his rook down here. Okay. But here's a nice winning move right here. Bishop g1, king h1, and then bishop e4. Notice the queen is threatening to take the rook. So the, the, the uh, bishop is pinning the rook. And the queen is just threatening to capture. So therefore if knight takes e4. Then just queen takes f3 check. Followed by mate. And if he just takes queen d1. King f1 h2. Alright. Instead he played bishop takes c3. B takes c3 and rook, eight, rook e2, which looks promising. So even though bishop takes c3 was a mistake, I, I mean, I can I can understand that. But the problem is, is here, Fisher has a forced perpetual. <laughs> and he plays queen c8 check, king g7. And then after queen d7... The queen d7, there's really no, um, you know, at the queen d7, there's really no, um, there's no way to get out of the perpetual. So, for example, if he went there, then you just take here, queen h3, king d7, queen d7 check. Try to go there. Queen g4. Queen g5. Queen e6. King h5. There's just no way out. Everywhere there's a check. And that will be a draw. However, and again, you can't blame Fisher. He played queen g4 check. However, this allows Pupos to block the checks from happening. And after queen g6, queen d7, king h6, now he doesn't have the uh, continued checks. Because after queen takes here, then black will simply just interpose his queen and then white's queen will be pinned. And therefore, after king h6, Bobby Fischer resigned all right so that will be all for today so i hope you enjoyed that game like and subscribe and comment and don't be too hard on fisher again he was only 11 or 12 years old at the time but um there's an amazing game um to watch and an obscure opening also all right so i'll see you guys next time